superhero games have improved significantly in recent years, but that doesn't mean there haven't been a few or more than a few duds along the way. I have to destroy them. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 worst superhero video games. I'm not sure you can. You ask me, it's gonna get a lot worse before it gets better, huh? We're keeping it pretty simple for this list. As we're focusing this on games that feature some form of licensed superhero, and were panned by critics and gamers alike. No! Number 10, Thor, God of Thunder. <laughs> Marvel may be having success on the big screen, but that has not translated into success in the gaming world. It doesn't matter. They'll suffer for this all the same. There have been several horrible titles, including this 2011 game based on the first Thor film. You cannot hope to win. Although the DS version isn't too bad, the home console versions suffer from combat with very little variety and a dull story that gives you very little reason to keep going. <laughs> At its best, it's a dull game with bad graphics. At its worst, it's broken and basically unplayable due to the high number of glitches. What in the nine worlds? Someone should tell Odin. Number nine, X-Men Destiny. Looks like we got ourselves a mutie. Wait, no! I'll take this freak out at the knees. We're on the same side. Sometimes a studio puts a ton of effort into a game and it just doesn't come together in the end. Other times, however, the game is doomed from the start. Why are you standing still? So slow, pay attention! Employees who worked on the game have gone on record stating that the company, Silicon Knights, was unfocused and disorganized, which resulted in a game that was far from a finished product. Look after your own and understand this. I want your so-called peacekeepers out of this area. Putting aside the fact that the game doesn't let you play as Wolverine, the graphics would be mediocre for a PS2 title, and the combat devolves into repetitive button mashing. The seemingly unfinished story and sluggish gameplay only further support the idea that this game was not a priority. Everyone's on edge around here. You might be harmless, but these days, most people don't want to take chances. Number eight, Catwoman. Hey, who do I have to whip to get a drink in this place? Sure, nobody expected a game based on this train wreck of a film to be good, but this title doesn't even come close to mediocre. Wanna dance, big boy? Forget the story, gameplay, and graphics for a second. The biggest problem with this game is the lack of camera control. For some unknown reason, EA decided to use a fixed camera mechanic, which made it impossible at times for gamers to even see where they're supposed to go. It's pretty disheartening to beat up several criminals only to fall to your death because you couldn't see the edge of the roof. Number 7, The Incredible Hulk, The Pantheon Saga. We're not game developers, but it can't be that difficult to make a great Incredible Hulk game, right? All the ingredients for a success are there. Well, things start off okay in this title, as the Hulk is placed in a high-tech facility and has to essentially Hulk smash his way out. Hey Crash, the Hulk is free! Like so many other Hulk games, however, this one fails to deliver, with sterile environments and dreadful sound quality. The cutscenes are laughable, and the Hulk is a barely recognizable pile of green pixels. To top it off, the story barely even follows the comic that the game is based on. Number 6, Iron Man. We're getting out of here. Oh yes? Not so easy. In the comics, Tony Stark suffers from alcoholism. We'd be driven to drink too if we knew that we inspired this dreadful game. I'll put my head in the sand, stick out my ass, and not think about what's going on around us. It was criticized for frustrating controls and repetitive gameplay, which ultimately made the game disengaging and dull, the last thing you want in an Iron Man game. Everything's always a joke with you. Although the graphics aren't terrible, they're certainly lackluster, and are further hurt by the fact that there are several levels featuring so many enemies on screen that it's difficult to even see what's happening. Number 5, The Uncanny X-Men. We might be a little harsh here, because the NES had no shortage of terrible games, mainly due to the fact that gaming was still relatively new as an industry and people were still trying to figure out what a good game was. Still, this title is especially bad. 
Although you get to play as a variety of characters, the top-down viewpoint makes it difficult to distinguish between them, which is only one of the problems with this sloppy game. It also works best as a shooter, which makes playing Wolverine or Colossus essentially pointless. Number 4. Spawn – The Eternal Everyone has an off day from time to time, and that may explain what happened with this title, which was developed by the usually impressive Capcom. The poorly placed camera makes it difficult to see what's happening, although that might be a plus considering how dreadful the graphics are. Many people also complained about the simplistic combat and easy puzzles, which fail to provide a challenge and become tedious and repetitive throughout the course of the game. Number 3. Batman – Dark Tomorrow The recent success of the Arkham series has caused most people to forget about this terrible game, but we certainly haven't. Must you do that every time? What's wrong? This title essentially resorts to Batman beating up giant rats, which is almost criminal considering the number of incredible villains that exist in the Batman universe. <laughs> you know what would have been funny though, if I'd... no. No, we'll save that for another time, won't we? The graphics and controls are terrible, but it's the ending that's especially bad. If you failed to deactivate the explosives in a secret room, you're forced to sit and watch a lengthy bad ending, culminating in the Dark Knight's death. I think we all had a dark day tomorrow after playing this. Number 2. Aquaman – Battle for Atlantis Aquaman receives a lot of criticism, justified or not, but it's games like this that definitely contribute to that negative reputation. Battle for Atlantis features very repetitive and drawn-out combat, plenty of invisible walls, and a nauseating camera system. The graphics are also dreadful, and while the controls are relatively unique, all you need to do is learn the basic punch button. The game seems large, but it lacks any and all detail which makes you wonder why Aquaman is even fighting to defend this place at all. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Got the spider! Hey, would you be my arch enemy? <laughs> Number 1. Superman No surprise here. Better known as Superman 64. It's not just the worst superhero game of all time, it just might be one of the worst video games ever. Seriously, we don't even know where to begin. First, the game takes place in a virtual world, so nothing you do actually matters. Shockingly, Superman moves very slowly, which makes the already painful floating ring missions even worse. It has terrible graphics, poor controls, and a seemingly endless number of bugs and glitches. In fact, this game is so bad that it makes nearly every other entry on this list seem playable by comparison. Well, almost anyway. Do you agree with our list? Given the events that started this, yes. Which superhero game do you think is the worst? For more great top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Look, I, I have to go on a business trip. What trip? Th there's nothing on your calendar. Just came up.